Okay, we are going to compute this limit, and this right here is a rebound sound situation. So, we should know that this right here represents the area under a curve from a number to the other, right? So if we can tell the function and also from where to where, we will be able to change this to an integral and solve it from there, right? So first of all, we should pay attention to where the delta x part is. And that's usually a number over n. And we have it right in the front, right? That, that's good. And usually, you might want to look at the um, sum as uh, in the sigma notation. So if you look at this, you want to pick the sigma, of course, we can go ahead and do that. So maybe let's take some time to do that first. This is the limit as n goes to infinity. And notice that this is just 1 pi, and this is 2 pi, and 3 pi, and then 4 pi, and so on, so on, so on. And here we have the n pi, and then everything else is the same, right? So I'm going to now put down the sigma notation. I goes from 1 to n, and I will just put down pi over n, and of course everybody has that. So we have this multiplied by sine of, and the red numbers right here will be the i. So we'll just put on i right here, and then the rest is the same, pi over n like this. So that's pretty much the idea. If you want to look at this form, that's totally okay. But anyway, this right here tells us the delta x. And the number on the top tells us the interval, the length has to be pi. So if you start with zero, which you should always try to do that, so you'll be just go from zero to pi. If you start with pi, you'll go from pi to two pi. If you go from three pi, you'll end up with four pi, etc. And this right here is precisely our function part. Notice that, of course, we have to talk about the sign, right? So this is f of the, and this right here is the input. That's the xi part. So our function is just sine x. And don't do anything crazy. Just start with zero. That's fine. Especially notice that the input is just this, i pi over n. You don't add or subtract any other numbers. So just start with zero for the uh, integral. Right? So this right here represents the area under sine x from zero to pi. We write here as the integral from zero to pi. And here we have our sine. And the input is just x, like this. Again, you can come with different answers, but this right here should be the most straightforward one. So just do that. And of course, we'll calculate this by using the fundamental zero calculus, part two. And just ask yourself, the derivative what will give us sine x? And the answer to that is negative cosine. So the first step is we have negative cosine x right here. And then we are going to be plugging, plugging, right? So here is zero and here's pi. And then I will just write this down. This is going to be negative cosine of pi. So this is the first part, and then minus the second part, you put zero into cosine. Be super careful though. The second part is not always equal to zero, right? Anyway, this right here, cosine pi is negative one, but here we have negative negative one. So all in all, this right here is equal to positive one. And then, Cosine of zero is actually one. And this right here is negative one, but negative negative one. So in fact, we're talking about one plus, right? One plus one. So all in all, the answer is two. <laughs> and that's it, right? You, end, you start with a crazy expression, but you end up with a very nice number. And in fact, this is the easiest math question, namely one plus one is equal to two. That's it.